Today we're going to learn how to determine if an equation is balanced or if it is unbalanced. You're going to need out your 7173 packet and you're going to work on the very last page in the very back. It should be completely blank. So why do we need to know if something is balanced or unbalanced? Well, all the equations, all chemical equations, need to follow the law of conservation of mass, which states that matter cannot be created nor destroyed. So in this case, it means that whatever we start with in our reactants, we need to finish with in our products. You have to have the same number and type of atoms in your reactants as you do on your products. So we're going to do an example together. So you want to write down this chemical equation. To determine balanced versus not balanced, the first thing that you do is you're going to draw a straight line down, kind of by the yield sign. We're going to write down all of the atoms that we have on the reactant side. So it looks like we have hydrogen and oxygen. Now we're going to count how many atoms we have. This subscript 2 goes with only the hydrogen. So I have two hydrogens, and there's no subscript after the oxygen. That in the case of just one oxygen. Okay, so now I'm going to copy my list from the reactants over to the product side. And I'm going to count again. Hydrogen has two as a subscript, so there's two hydrogens. Oxygen has two as a subscript, which means that there's two oxygens. Now when I compare two hydrogens to two hydrogens, that's good. One oxygen on the reactants two oxygen in the products, that's not balanced. So the entire equation is not balanced and does not follow the law of conservation of matter. Let's try another example together. Alright, so let's write this example down. Just like last time, we're going to put a straight line down separating our reactants and our product side. So it looks like I have magnesium in my reactants and oxygen. So we're going to write both of those down. This coefficient multiplies through an entire compound. So in this case, it's only going to multiply through the magnesium. And because there's no subscript, you assume that it's 1. So 2 times 1. In this case, there's two magnesium atoms. Oxygen, subscript of 2, 2 oxygens. We copy our list down again on the product side. Now. This coefficient is going to multiply through the magnesium and the oxygen. Both of them have a subscript of 1 that you can't see. So we have two magnesiums, we have two oxygens. Now when I compare the reactants to the product side, it looks like we have the same type and the same number of atoms. We would call this balanced. Our final example is a little bit longer, so you might need to pause the video to record it. Again, we're going to put a straight line down right by the yield sign. Let's go to the reactant side and write down everything we have. We have aluminum. That's pretty apparent. We have calcium. Now, we have two things we haven't seen yet, SO4 and OH. If you remember from our list, these are polyatomic ions. The OH is hydroxide, the SO4 is sulfate. What that means is this is a group of elements that cannot be broken up. So I have to keep them together. So you'll notice that they're also on the product side together. They weren't broken up. In the reactants, I'm going to write it down like this. SO4 stays together. OH or hydroxide stays together. All right, let's count our atoms. Aluminum, we have two. Sulfates, we have three. Calcium, we have one. Hydroxide, we have two. All right, copy our list down. Count atoms above on the product side now. One aluminum, one sulfate, one calcium, one, three hydroxides. So now when we compare our two lists, we can see that two aluminums to one aluminum, not balanced. One calcium to one calcium, that's fine. Three sulfates to one, not balanced, two hydroxides to three hydroxide, 
not balanced. So the entire equation is not balanced. It does not follow the law of conservation of matter. Now what you're gonna do in class is try a little bit of these to see to determine balance or not balance. So on page two of your packet, you're gonna complete one through seven. Looks like number one's already done for you, but this is a good example of how all of your work should look in two through seven. 